Anyway, so antibodies, antivirals. We think we can also have, very early in an ep and the epidemic, a thing you can inhale uh, that will mean that you can't be infected, a, a blocker, an inhaled blocker. We also need to fix the three problems with vaccines. The current vaccines are not infection blocking. Uh, they're not broad, so when new variants come up, you lose protection. And they have very short duration, uh, particularly in the people who matter, which are old people. And every one of those things is, is fixable. Uh, in fact, doing that work is going to help vaccinology very, very broadly. That was Microsoft billionaire and philanthropist Bill Gates speaking on the coronavirus mRNA vaccines at, at a Lowry Institute event in Australia. Robbie, uh, what do you make of that? First off, this weird kind of um, glass onion-esque allusion to an inhaler that will block uh, COVID transmission seems oh, right. to be in they the works. Do, they do have that in glass <laughs> onion. Yeah. And they're making fun of the idea, I think. Yeah, a little, a little plot device. Uh, yeah, sure. sure I mean, if, if such a thing is possible, bring it on. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't heard a lot about that being in the final right. stages of development. But, uh, but the, of course, the main story here is that people are talking about is, as Bill Gates kind of um, being open about the, the lower effect, eff efficacy of the mm -hmm. mRNA vaccine. Yeah, I mean, he really nails it on, on the issues that we're having with them, which is the, the short duration of protection, no, uh, not a significant discernible impact on, uh, on transmission of cases and, and, you know, et cetera, not a, not a massive benefit for a, a lot of otherwise healthy and younger people. Uh, you know, uh, Bill Gates was a major, I think it's fair to say, major proponent of mRNA vaccine technology. He was an investor uh, in BioNTech, which developed the, the mRNA vaccine for Pfizer. Um, we were just doing some digging, and we see that he actually sold a lot of those shares at a, how much profit was that? 10x. Uh, so he invested $55 million um, in BioNTech back in 2019, uh, and it's now worth uh, north of 50, $550 million. Uh, he sold uh, some stock, what was it, in um, at the end of last year, I believe it was, uh, uh, with the share price over $300. Um, a share, which represented a huge gain for him over when he invested. So yeah, he certainly has profited so a great deal. So let's follow that this. trajectory. Buys, invests heavily in BioNTech. mRNA vaccines, great. This is the future. This is, uh, you know, he talked about the vaccine timeline and how, you know, we could develop it faster. We might have to cut some corners on safety, but it could be developed faster. All in, sells it. Makes a huge amount of money. Now it's like, yeah, it's it's a little, it's it's okay. It could be better. Um, but what we really need is these is this this breath spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that, Robbie, it doesn't. Sound I don't mean I don't mean to sound unreasonable, but yeah. that that is the that is the steps that was taken. Th that that's what happened. A 2019 investment pre IPO, okay. a 2021 sell at three hundred dollars plus a share. And what some people have identified as a change in tone about the vaccine uh, and its efficacy, stronger on it when he was more invested in it, weaker on it now, although still encouraging further investments in technology as he is, continues to be invested in BioNTech mm -hmm. as a company to come up with other COVID inter interventions going forward. I mean, the idea of people, I mean, we just, we talked about this in another segment today about um, Nancy Pelosi's stock investments. I mean, people who have any kind of policy role, official or unofficial, the way that um, Bill Gates has, I mean, Bill Gates' sheer wealth puts him in a position to be influential in a policy realm, wrongly, I would argue, but that is the way the world is operating. And for there not to be more interrogation of his conflict of interests here by the mainstream is deeply disturbing. And for people who have been skeptical of this aspect of Pfizer and the drug development around COVID, um, and who have been shot down by the mainstream media as kooks, um, anti-vaxxers, and the like, when I frankly think that this, this issue of pharmaceutical corruption and people pushing various interventions, um, having an investment in profit, should have been an issue that the left was leading on, because um, it's a constructive mm -hmm area of interrogation. Especially when it comes to policy. We have to be more transparent about the fact that people who are having input in, in 
what the government policy is going to be, what's going to be required of people. The Biden administration tried to require people to get this. Doesn't it, yeah. shouldn't it be known at least when there are hundreds of millions of dollars of, of financial interest at stake for the people advising these decisions? Yes. I mean, we talked and about- And their tune changes, it follows the money. Yeah. A, f- a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, we, had, we talked about that story where the new booster, this isn't an argument against boosters, but it's an argument against this new booster that was supposed to offer more protection against the, the current variant, in fact, offered less protection. And then you dig a little deeper. And if the government has paid, like, what was it, $5 billion for this new booster that wasn't actually more effective mm-hmm. than the booster and that the already paid for. And the CDC's not happy about that. It's not, just, yeah, it's not exactly. just all the conspiracy theory kooks out there. The CDC itself exactly. is like, wait a minute, you didn't tell us about that. This is a grift. People, These companies are extracting money, taxpayer money, as it were, um, to pay for medical treatments that are not indicated by medical professions and, in fact, are yet less useful than what we already have. At the same time, and I talked about this in my radar, the Biden administration is opening its doors, its revolving doors, to people from these various industries, like Jeff Zients, uh, who is the new uh, um, uh, uh, chief of staff for Joe Biden as Ron Klain exits, who has spent his entire career profiting um, at the kinds of uh, companies, investing in these kinds of companies that have been overbilling the government, overcharging the government for Medicare uh, uh, and Medicaid payments and extracting these exact kind of um, overpayments. It is the, an enormous grift, and a grift that is incredibly uh, common. Pro- pharmaceutical co- companies have been trying to trick doctors and e- extract overpayments mm-hmm. since time immemorial. Occasionally, they get these taps on the wrist where they have to pay these settlements. But on the whole, they get away with it. And the idea that the Biden administration is now saying, we, we want one of those guys to be in a senior leadership position here at the White House, it's, it's deeply disturbing. Yeah, it is deeply disturbing. You've got to follow the money a, a little bit. Like, that's not, it's not, I'm not demonization, uh, demonizing people making money or, or, or people investing or any of that, but we need to know about it when it intersects with public policy, with, with important pushes to, and with what you're describing. People connected to the healthcare industry who made, who made millions of dollars now running the White House, now advising the president, a, a president who seems like, He's someone who can be advised. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> who, who takes advice. Who's at a stage of his life where he li- can listen to the people around him. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that uh, Zions, of course, uh, used to be a Facebook and that he was the COVID no, czar. No, I mean, it's like uh, if you if you connect all the dots to all the position he's been in, it's going to start to form a pentagram. Oh, no. Point, oh, no. It's, so, well. it's so pernicious. All of, the, all of the different pots that he's been in um, are frankly just not pots, not, not industries, not sectors that have been, uh, shall we say, in line with the interests of the American people. We're going to have to have a little seance to get rid of this <laughs> bad stuff. Burn some sage? Is that what the what the witches and oh, or kids oh, are doing Oh, yeah. I had a good friend in the Bernie headquarters that got in trouble for trying to cleanse the air for burning some sage in the office. You heard it here first. That checks out. More rising right after this. 